Oh, you've been sitting there listening, you know, very calmly and uh, atten <coughs> attentively. Time for a quiz, okay? We're just going to do a show of hands. Don't be embarrassed. <laughs> so which of the following is true about cholesterol in your bloodstream, okay? Number one, you need to eat cholesterol for your body to function normally. Okay. Cholesterol in the blood is critical for the brain function. I got some yeses, okay. You need adequate serum cholesterol for your wound healing and tissue repair. I got some mixed, so I've got a no, yes, and, and uh, uh, a mixed response. It improves significantly with diet and exercise. Okay, got a little more, and then of course there's this one. Okay, yeah, that's where most doctors are. Okay, all right. So yeah, the answer was tissue repair. That is, if you, if you look at the data carefully, and we talked a little bit about this last night, the Dallas Heart Study, people with uh, PCSK9 uh, uh, mutations, that non-functioning mutation, that molecule doesn't work. Their LDL receptors don't go away. Um, they don't age out. The uh, LDL in the bloodstream is extremely low, and they, it gets like infants who have very low single-digit LDL cholesterols, and they're growing brains, they're doing tissue repair. Uh, what's in your bloodstream uh, currently, now see what we say next month or next year, but right now, as our understanding has changed dramatically on this, what's in the uh, bloodstream is the extra that you don't really need. Uh, all it does is deposit at some either fast or slow rate into your arteries, uh, or you can actually get it out of your arteries if you've got uh, it low enough. Okay. All right, you ready? So, which of the following is correct about cholesterol content? If you have 100 grams of blank, uh, which uh, of the following is correct? Uh, and actually, this one is a less than or equal, so you don't need the, the 100 grams will be on the next slide. Okay, is chicken less than pork? Okay. Beef, more than egg yolks? No. 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 Okay. Egg whites, more than salmon? No? no. no? Yes. yes, I heard it. Yes. Quinoa, less than cashews? Yeah. Yeah. Old school. <laughs> <laughs> One person, both zero. Yeah, okay. Not sure. There we go. There we go. <laughs> okay. All right. So, chicken, 85 milligrams per 100 grams. Uh, pork would be 86. It's actually slightly higher. Beef, 90. Salmon, 63. Peanuts, zero. And of course, almonds, cashew. It doesn't matter what plant I put up there, it's going to be zero. Egg whites are zero, okay? But eggs usually come with a egg yolk, and per 100 grams of egg yolks, it's over 1,000, okay? So that would be 250 in a typical egg. And so that three egg omelet is really going uh, a massive amount of cholesterol. Okay. Okay, so it's been a lot of time talking about <coughs> details on cholesterol and inflammation. So what I was setting you up for was this, that sure, you can eat all you want and develop all this sugar-related inflammation and the like, and then treat it with a statin, or you could do something like the portfolio diet, which is a completely vegan diet, it has plant sterols, soy protein, viscous fibers, and almonds, okay? And when you compare that to a relatively low-fat diet, or that low-fat diet plus a statin, you see that the inflammation marker, the C-reactive protein, goes down dramatically with the dietary intervention, stays down, okay? Goes down a hair faster than with a statin, although the statin did get the job done by the four-week mark. And the LDL cholesterol had a dramatic decrease that paralleled and equaled that of the statin. So you can do this with diet. And so, yeah, sure, I love statins, but only for the people who cannot, will not um, fix the diet first. And that's actually what our guidelines say. Fix the diet, do the exercise, uh, and then use medication if you have to. So I, I just want to spend a little bit more time talking about uh, uh, sugar and safety and the like, because uh, they, there was some sort of shocking stuff that was published a few years ago from the Nurses' Health Study. Do we have any nurses in the audience? Okay, fantastic. Any of you in the Nurses' Health Study? Oh my gosh. So I just want to thank you personally for the next 50 slides, probably. <laughs> okay. All right. 
So massive amount of data. Um, this one is the competing risks analysis, where it talks about what did people put on their health questionnaire and, you know, what happened, you know, and did they die? And when you just sort of think about it, I think most of us would have assumed that uh, smoking would be the, the biggest correlate. I mean, everybody says you lose, you know, what is it, 30 minutes of your life or something like that with every cigarette. Well, uh, I, I'm sure that, I think I'm sure I've got that wrong, but it's some massive quantity of life that you lose. And so you'd like, uh, uh, you would think that that would be the biggest correlate with death. It turns out it came in third. Uh, number one, with aging, okay, that's fine, okay. <laughs> um, but getting older is, is inevitable if you're not dying, that's just part of it. But the number two was actually diabetes, not smoking. Diabetes, uh, smoking came in third. But I'm not gonna focus on that, I'm gonna focus on the nutrition part up, uh, up in the upper right-hand corner. Because most of us were not surprised to find that vegetable fiber would decrease mortality. So hazard ratio less than one means that you're getting better, and in this case, the 0.84 means a 16% decrease. Make sense? Okay. Now, look at the cholesterol. Now, that's eating a hamburger, a egg yolk, whatever. A, a dose of cholesterol in a, your typical American meal would increase your mortality by about 17% compared to people who are not doing that. But the point estimate for a sugar load okay, was actually higher than the cholesterol. That's trying to tell us that sugar is worse than meat, uh, that it's worse than eggs, that it's worse than beef, pork, and the like. And so we, we really do need to pay attention to that. Okay, so um, there, we have a lot of discussion about different dietary patterns. And we now have more data than we've ever had. Uh, this actually very creative group we're looking at geographic differences in stroke, and the, the REGARDS trial published these curves. Again, these are Kaplan-Meier plots. They are talking about decrease, or uh, heart attack, stroke, and death, and what you're seeing going across the screen is event-free survival based on diet. And that red line, the one that's the worst, is actually uh, the so-called southern diet. So that is your typical African-American southern diet with, um, you know, taking the vegetables and put in meat in the, you know, uh, collard greens with fat back or neck bones, uh, ham hocks, uh, eating organ meats, taking not just yams but candied yams uh, so that they're really sweet, sweet tea and the like. If you look at that pattern and you pull it out, this is what they get, 30% risk uh, higher risk of stroke, 56% higher risk, <coughs> excuse me, of heart disease, and a 50% increase in risk to the patients who have kidney failure, but probably resulting in the kidney failure in, in the, uh, to begin with. And so we really do need to make the kind of changes um, that will help us. Now, is it, is it really the diet or is it the people? Well, that was sort of answered by the fact that the Adventists went back and looked at the African-American uh, population in their congregation. And what they saw was really the same thing, that if you were doing that vegan diet, the African-American uh, part didn't hurt you. Uh, the incidence of hypertension, diabetes, uh, high blood cholesterol was actually significantly lowered 40, uh, sorry, 50, 60 percent lower uh, if you did the, uh, a good diet as opposed to uh, the typical southern diet. And so the vegetarian vegans uh, and even the pesco vegetarians uh, did a, a substantially better um, job of surviving without heart attack, stroke, and death uh, in the African-American population. Now, um, this goes on, uh, and if I had to pick out um, uh, this is one of the key articles, actually it was picked, it wasn't just me picking it, I was pleased to write an editorial about this when it was being published in Journal of American College of Cardiology, um, but it, it really put a, a, uh, a real uh, beam, a light beam, on the issue of healthful versus unhealthful plant-based diets. Because it's one thing to say I'm a vegan, it's another one to say I'm going to eat a whole food, plant-based diet 
that doesn't have anything in it that's you know, negative in terms of processed sugar and that sort of thing. Um, and the key illustration is, is here, that the, if you were to quantitate how many servings of things like uh, potato chips and fried foods and, you know, you've got zucchini, but you could bread and fry that zucchini, okay? French fries, uh, that sort of thing. You would find that the more servings you have on, of unhealthful plant-based diet, it's almost as bad as eating animals. Maybe not quite, but it's very close in, in, this, in this one study. And so the more healthy you can make your plant-based diet, the less heart attack, stroke, and death you're going to have. And so, yeah, we had a, an editorial. They gave me a bully pulpit for a few paragraphs and um, tried to hit the main topic. That is, uh, what we think should happen in cardiology is that everyone should be educated. And, uh, you know, what does a healthy plant-based diet really mean? It means that we need to change everything that we're doing. We need to know more about nutrition as cardiovascular specialists. Uh, we need to, you know, really uh, treat our cardiovascular disease at, at its roots, uh, not just uh, the end product. Soon after that, in our, uh, the Journal of the American Medical Association, there was an, another insightful article. So 2017 was a, a big deal in terms of nutrition research. And those little bars are death rates. And so let's blow it up a little bit. It's actually telling you, uh, and I don't have a monitor up here, so uh, maybe I can get the people over in the front on the left to help us out a little bit, huh? Okay. All right. It's saying that you increase your death rate uh, if you <coughs> excuse me, are eating sodium, right? That's the, the top one, at more than 2,000 milligrams. Is that right? Okay. All right. And then what's the next one? I'm sorry. Low nuts and seeds, okay? So I know Dr. Russelson's not in the room. I uh, had a great discussion about nuts and seeds last night. Um, I want to just say that uh, there is room for his idea on this because this is probably what we call a substitutionary benefit. When people are eating nuts and seeds, uh, they're getting protein, they're getting monounsaturated fat, they're getting some carbohydrate. They get to feel full. And so the, if you add up all the nut literature, it says that people actually lose weight even though they're eating a fatty compound uh, because you get satiety and it stops you from eating uh, uh, other things. And so more nuts, less meat is a dramatic improvement. That's actually been shown. Okay. What's next? Processed meat. High processed meat, huh? And what's the definition of high? Greater than zero. Greater than zero. How is that high? That's ever, isn't it? Ever? <laughs> okay. And so, yes, the, um, the point was that, um, you know, yes, meat kills. And as I'll show you, processed meat kills faster. And so anything that you can do to avoid that and spread the word uh, is going to help with our cardiovascular mortality issue. And so that it, it's just, I, obviously, I wasn't one of the reviewers of this when we're writing editorials for JAMA, but I would have caught that, that high that's not high, that's any, okay, all right. Uh, so it went on and on, uh, you know, and the, the kinds of things that you'd like to avoid are up here, uh, not having enough vegetables, not having enough fruit, they all increase mortality. And so uh, I encourage you to, to keep paying attention to these kind of uh, articles uh, because they really can uh, influence folks' behaviors to know that you're increasing mortality significantly.